Are we doing that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guy. <laughs> a year and a half ago, I made a little film about trying to create the world's biggest template. A lofty and somewhat useless ambition, if ever there was one. However, I had inside information and was aware something was simmering away in the background at Spitfire. And because I knew this was a long-term project in true Henson style, I kind of got into a flow and then stopped. There were admittedly some limitations to logic, my door of choice, that were hampering my efforts. So a recent update to logic with unlimited tracks or loads more tracks made me spring back into action. That and this big thing that Spitfire was doing was coming to fruition. The project of course we're talking about is the one that we announced last week, the BBC Symphony Orchestra. And the thing that I really centred in on during our keynote was the potential to share and collaborate. Because having an orchestra plugin that is a self-contained organism allows us to create materials around it that are common to all. If I had shared with you my world biggest, in inverted commas, template, it would have been all but useless. Because your selection of libraries put together like, I guess you would, a PC, would not be common to mine. So, a couple of weeks ago, Jake came up to Edinburgh to basically build the kind of the skeleton, the, the infrastructure of this template with everything that we would uh, want, both as an engineer for him and as a film composer for me. He then came up a couple of days ago for us to try and attempt to finish our first pass at this template. How did we do? Well, I'm happy to report we're there, we've done it, which is why I'm travelling down to London to present it to the team, to get feedback from them. And is it the biggest orchestral template in the world? Well, well what I can say is we managed to load in 418 articulations without my system even so much as blinking. So let's see how Jake and I got on. So we've done a little bit of tickling since last time. Yeah. But should we just kind of refresh nice and quickly? You've created a skeleton. Yeah. Which I'm going to start loading kind of tomorrow morning, loading uh, instruments into. Now, we're actually going to give away this skeleton for those of you who are Logic users who want to have a look around. We'd really appreciate any kind of things that we be may be missing. If you watch the video to the end, we're going to come to a whole bunch of questions. And please, any more suggestions or comments you have, leave them in the comments down below. So in the video description is a WeTransfer for a link to Jake Jackson's kind of skeleton template. So you don't have to have BBC Symphony Orchestra to use this. Big list of things for us still to do with this template. And I think we'll probably be 98% there by the end of the uh, yeah. tomorrow, yeah. which is good. We've done a few little bit of work. It looks slightly different to as we left it. The print tracks are just hidden here nicely in a group. Here are our nine stacks, stem stacks. Um, inside of those, we'll look down here on the, um, on the mixer windows, but easy to see, but you have the four different articulations that are set with the reverbs kind of ready to go. We'll tweak those a little bit, but they're just ready to go. You can switch them on. And then here we have our empty effects channels, reverb, reverb, effects, effects, effects. They can be whatever you like. And in fact, if you look in this way, we've actually made them more small here, but also hidden the effects tracks just to make it neater. So I think actually, if we just look up to the strings, so we've got the, the four stems are longs, shorts, pits, colenio, and strings yeah. effects. And also then the, the full strings as well. That's the way the, the way the routing works. Let's just scrope down here, you'll see. So here we have the four stems, 56, 57, 58, 59, and they all go to bus 50 to make, bus 50 to make our string. Great, excellent. So then we, if we go down to the prints here, print 500, so that's all of the strings. With, with reverb. And then the stems without. Yes. Excellent. And which one do we monitor? We monitor the stack, yeah. 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 There's really strict kind of titling or numbering protocol yeah. so that you always know that one is your, your first reverb yeah. and, and two is your second reverb. And then six, seven, eight, nine are the four stems. And, you know, I think one of the first questions people ask is, well, it's just going to be loads of reverbs. Is that not a problem? That's one of the questions we'll be coming back yeah. to a little bit later. Us composers fall into two distinctive electronic orchestration camps one channel per articulation and the key switches. I'm of the former camp and why I'm so evangelical about having a different articulation for each track is I believe and I've witnessed the way that musicians innately perform these samples means that the amount of 
room reverberation on the samples is inconsistent between, say, longs and shorts, which is why I always assign different reverb send amounts to each articulation. So this leads to having huge templates, whereas the key switches will simply have one channel per instrument and will key switch between the different articulations or techniques. I think there's a third way, a hybrid way. What if we were to organize presets by their stems and then customize a key switch set within those or a preset if you will. So take for example Pizzicato, whereas I usually have a devoted track for that, devoted for Colegno, devoted for say Bartol Pitts, all going into the same stem with the same reverb amounts. What if I were to organize it so that all three of those articulations were customized into one preset and I could switch between them? This is the method I've decided to adopt. I feel like um, an excited boy coming out of the school gates showing his dad <laughs> a, a, his painting. But um, why don't you take that seat just for now, I'll just take you yep. through a few bits that I'm really excited about. Yeah, great. First one is that in Logic you can load icons, and I believe we've done icons for all the instruments. Oh, so right. oh, great. Look at, that. at the moment Amazing. it's just the flutes yeah. for the woodwinds. And then nice, um, like yeah, you've yeah. got the brass wow. little French horn there. So I think that's going to be fancy. But yeah. the other thing is you loaded in the latest iteration of um, BBC SO yeah. uh, uh, yesterday, yeah, yeah. courtesy of the chaps down at the HQ. And what happens is it's very subtle, but this blue colour, blue. Oh, yes. And then red colour, sorry, red. Oh, look at that. That's neat. <laughs> <laughs> so that's rather tasty. So I've currently got up to, I've not done the violins, but again, if we go like that, green. Wow, look at that. Wow, okay, cool. Uh, lots of d different things that I'm noticing, things like you've just heard there, that loads with that vibrato. So I'm going to do, I think that is is better there. I definitely think this hybrid way of working is the way to go because what I, the, the minute I've kind of started going through these things, so legato, and then you've got the longs. Oh, that should be loaded into the longs. And then you've got the spiccato there. So legato, long, Barney. spiccato, pizzicato, and then the tremolo, stuff like that there. What I'm realizing is that you do, we use 5% of the samples 95% of the time. Right, yeah, yeah. So sense, to yeah. have just so many tracks is just nuts. I suspect what will happen is like, if I want to do the long harmonics is I will duplicate that track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then all of the bassing will remain and all of that kind of stuff. Yes. But can I just show you how I would make maybe the next second violins or, yes. uh, or, or maybe I'll make the um, second violin leader. Yeah. Um, because there may be an opportunity when I've got that board thing later to for you to load some in possibly yeah, of course, yeah, of course. but also you get a real sense of the power of the UI so what I do is just to save potential bussing screw ups is yeah. I just duplicate yeah. that and there's a little bit of titling expediency yeah, there as well it's been really thought about we just go to the next one and that's oh, the right. lead the <laughs> leader all in one yeah and then this is just really easy so the first one is legato so I'm just going to get rid of all the others there, save, and then I just adjust the, and then the same here. So that just goes to the next one. And I'm just oh, well, doing, cool. I'm just doing oh, okay, tree yeah. mics at the moment. Yeah. So that is longs. So it's consort flautando long, not the harmonics, saltasto long. I see. So you're removing all these from. from this is a bit because what appears on the on the um, yeah so you can then key switch this is the kind of hybrid right, you know okay, yeah, and, yeah. and 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 also you've curated what what needs to be correctly bussed into those yeah. busts yeah now we i remember there was a question at the keynote uh, about the key switches whether they're going to stay on whether well, I guess whether if you change that, whether it changes the key switches or the key switches. Stay, yes, so. that's something that we need to investigate. Well, There's yeah, something else yeah. I want to talk to you about as well, which we need to experiment and investigate as well. So not the tremolo, but the trills. So that's uh, longs, and then just again here, just might as well just get to the end. So yeah, I see. So you, do, I see, so you just use the all-in-one, and then you just take out what's like see here makes sense. Yeah. So short harmonics I put on the effects. Mm -hmm. So spiccato, staccato is all I need from the shorts obviously there are more articulations on the sections than there are on the on the lead yeah of course yeah and then the colenio pizzicato is i think it's uh three different things it's pits colenios and bartok pits is the problem is it yeah exactly yeah. and i like that. that's really satisfying hmm. so this is really um yeah 
fancy, I think. Yes, there's a real elegance to this, which I enjoy. Um, Makata Consort Flout. So Long's harmonics is going in, short harmonics, and it's just the trem. And the reason, again, for putting these on a separate track is these tend to be used as layering things, yeah. so you don't mm -hmm. want to divisi uh, smaller sections. So this is just using the tree mics. We're currently at seven gigabyte of RAM being right. used, which I'm fine because I've got 100, 128 gig. Yeah. But it's going to be interesting if we were to introduce more than one mic. Yeah. So I think there's an argument to creating a template with your various mm -hmm. microphone mixes, but then to be able to unload samples. I don't know yeah, if Yeah, but I guess, I guess there's ways of probably being able to delete tracks as well you know like some people probably wouldn't want the leader sections things like that oh so yes absolutely out, you know? but i'm also wondering if we actually switch save this off. down with these switched off whether they load the samples in so that's something to test, test. that's very easy to do yeah. uh, uh, later i've got a little idea for a competition jake uh, have you if someone can guess bearing in mind if you go to the spitfire site you can see how many instruments and how many articulations there are uh, so my suggestion is if you can guess accurately the uh, total gigabyte <laughs> load-in count once we've finished this uh, <laughs> template will get you a free copy. So, how much RAM do you think is going to be preloaded with the BBC SO plugin once I have every single articulation loaded? So we've already got over seven gigabytes, I think it's 7.32 after loading all of the woods, the brass, about a third of the strings, and there's been some brilliant maths going on of VI control, so I'm gonna encourage that. The default streaming buffer is set to 65,536 samples, and the preload buffer is set to 12,288 samples. So place your wager gigabytes to one decimal point in the comments down below. But before you place your comment, could you please read the rules, terms and conditions in the video description? We got to the end, didn't we? We have got to the end. <laughs> so that's every single articulation in the BBC SO loaded up in this yeah. hybrid form. So it's a custom key switch preset made according to the stems that they sit in. Yeah. The total amount loaded is 204 megabytes. Is that all for everything? <laughs> no, basically what we've got is uh, things that they're all switched off, so you only have to load in what you want to use, basically. But we have loaded the whole lot, and we yes. know how much that is. Back to the template. So just want to give us a bit of a, yeah. a rundown, because it's it's an absolute beast, isn't it? It's a beast. It's what we wanted to do. It's what we actually wanted to achieve. We've got um, all of the instruments loaded, which is great. We've got some, if it loads, you can see what's happening. We've got a few, in, we've got a few, um, we're part of the way through um, getting the, um, icons sorted out but that's just because we don't have them all yet but we've gone through and every i've added now um reverbs uh two reverbs for each um stack um and i've also done a kind of jake amount worth of uh reverb for each of the if each of the channels so the strings have got a little bit of stuff so oh see, i see so you've done like the shorts. pizzicatos yeah, are less yeah, how clever um I've, I've got some i've done for the for the fx one two three i've just put them as a very you know you know like a, a normalish kind of amount so they're just there as a good starting point if you want to use them you just switch them on i've also added at the end of the, in the stereo output i've added a little um a kind of i mean this is very very got a very generic eq on it as well just you know the smiley brighty thing Basically. um and then just a limiter on there too just in case you want to have that on which is just the only thing I've, again i haven't changed any gain amounts uh, all i've done is just to turn the output level down to a sensible amount so that it if you make mp3s it doesn't uh, get too loud ever so there you go there's a little thing you can just switch them on Excellent. like that or off now this is us about kind of probably 98 percent of the way there we're going to get some feedback hopefully from the guys at logic yeah. we're going to get some feedback from guys at spitfire Download below the uh, the link to Jake's skeleton uh, structure. Yeah, which is basically going to be this, but without any of the BBC SO stuff. Absolutely. So, which you can use with your own orchestral libraries. Yeah. In the comments below, we will we read all of all. Of I will try and um, if if there's a, if there's any glaring errors, then I will try and uh, update it and uh, and fix it. A couple of things I think to do, just from a kind of anal tidying point of view, you'll see that if we maybe go to the string stack, what you'll see is if we go leader longs and then violins longs, you'll notice potentially that the layout 
of the articulations is not consistent. The leaders have slightly less articulations than the sections. And the so order is different. Is this, and that's the order, for me, long should be the first thing, and then long yeah, CS. Yeah. So what I will basically be doing when I'm in like business lounges and stuff is stuff like that. Those consistent. So that's something. And then that. Does. But then Matt also might then go with the key switches we've been talking the about. Key that, switches right. are universal. So a long is always a long. Oh, I see. Yeah, right, fine. And uh, I believe so. Uh, that's what the team tell me. And the other really big job for me is that I want to set up all the score preferences. If there's any ninjas out there who have any recommendations or indeed any Sibelius users on what are accepted principles, staves per page, you know, uh, bars per line, that kind of any pointers you can give me on that. The most important question to answer is does that mean it's a track count? No, it's a track count of 226 which is considerably less than if we'd loaded an articulation per track. I reckon be... More than that, I'm afraid. Let's have a look. 288. 286. 286. But it would have been, I would say, probably add another... It probably could have been three times that with an articulation for every track. Oh, more than that. Yeah, six times bigger, probably. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see... Uh, well, maybe not six, yeah, maybe three times bigger. When we make the track per articulation version... Um, Are we doing that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guy. <laughs> That's something that we may get some help on. Yeah. Before we leave, just a few questions from the last video. There was a lot of questions about uh, your safety tips, uh, Christian. Let's, uh... Se seat belt use in taxis. Thing is, grew up in central London. Uh, black cabs, you only get really in central London. Uh, the average speed of Mo automobiles in central London is six miles an hour as an average. So really taxis never go faster than about three or four miles an hour. So the chance of requiring a seat belt, belt uh, uh, well, I've never needed one. I've never gone, oh, glad I had. But um, that shouldn't be, that's not a good yeah, example a to take. And also it's, it's and against going, the law, going, it's against the law. And he was going at a rate, wasn't he? He was, he was a bit, but Excellent. he was taking us to a curry. So, you know, we'll, we'll you know. The other thing that I saw some people say is, let the man speak. I just interrupt Jake all the time, so I'm... Vincent Rice and uh, Corner Liston mentioned about uh, increasing the number of uh, lines in the mixer, which is great, as you can see here. I mean, the text, text, the text lines, yes. Yeah, so, so it means you can really see now what's, what's going on, which is fantastic. It makes life, life easier. And again, you can see here with this one now, with our hiding things in the height you can see it's really nice way of being able to see what is important and yeah your tracks obviously they have the nice icons which is fantastic um but it's really starting to look very neat um yeah. i must remember to change everything over to stereo pan that is not a uh, pan knob that is in fact if you look here if you look here it's in fact a balance knob which if you think back to your um old hi-fi days of your parents hi-fis mm -hmm. That makes one speaker louder than the other. So if you panned it this way, so you're taking both signals. No, in this situation, you're only turning your that. By that means you're hearing only the left side, and that means you're only hearing the right right side. Okay. So if you you need to be in stereo pan mode, and then that takes, as you can see now, it takes both part signals. You can see you can see exactly what it's doing. It's taking the left and the right and panning them both that way. Uh, Dave Crop has said it's, it's solid gold. Any chance we could get our hands on a template without plugins and such, and see how everything was rooted? Well. That's going to happen. Links below. Um, a number of people asked about whether we're going to be doing other oh, yes, doors been, and stuff. Uh, yeah, so, Cubase. Uh, I, and no one, at, to my knowledge, at Spitfire HQ is a uh, Cubase ninja. And I'm just hoping that one of you comes up with some te templates, the same with Reaper, the same with Studio One, the many different doors that are out there. And we will wholeheartedly support you on this, uh, helping to promote your efforts. Uh, I'm all ears to anyone who is an expert on you know cubase templates that kind of stuff oh yes well this takes us back to what we mentioned earlier St yeah. scott glasgow was saying that this is you know his temp template is is 10 reverbs you know this is going to be more is that not a concern it's going to be nine times two which is 18 so i mean that's not i mean not, you may have three to 27 um i don't think that's a concern these days for for modern computers so remember to put your wager into the comments how many ram you think this is going to be and we'll announce that this time next week. Again, have a look at the rules and conditions. Thanks, as always, for watching. Thanks so much to Jake for coming up to uh, Edinburgh to work on this extraordinarily nerdy project. Uh, so one of them for Jake would be fantastic. Subscribe if you haven't do, be churlish not to. There's prizes aplenty. And ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a video up. See you next time.